Hey guys, what's up? It's Monkle Zonki, and welcome to my range training guide. In this guide, we're going to be covering a lot of different training methods from level 1 to level 99 range, and I'll be offering you guys a lot of advice on how to train up to those levels. So before we get started, I have some links here on the screen. You can go to the lower level, medium level, or higher level methods as to not waste your time if you already have quite a few levels in range and you don't need to see the lower level stuff. There's also a link to the Abyss, which is a higher level method. You probably want at least level 80 range before you start trying to do that, where you can AFK range, and it costs a little bit of money, but it's very, very easy to do, and you don't have to pay attention to your screen. And I have a segment of this guide on how to do that as well, so you can skip ahead to that. But let's go ahead and get into these methods and figure out how we're going to be training our range from 1 until 99. So when you first start out range, you should be in the town of Berthorpe, and luckily you can get a free range weapon by trading the dude who's nearby the northern bank. And you can get a charge bow, and this is what you will be using from 1 to 30 range. Yeah, the weapon isn't very good, but the monsters we will be training on only have 50 HP, so it does not need to be. And that is in a cave just a bit north of the bank, and we'll be killing the troll shamans. So what's great about the troll shamans is the aforementioned 50 HP, and they're actually quite good XP as well, because you can KO them so quickly. So it should not take long, only about an hour to get from level 1 to 30 range, and this is just about the best place to do it. You only have access to one ability at the start, but you'll begin to unlock more and more range abilities as you go on. Again, these monsters have so little HP, there's no reason to worry about any sort of abilities that you're using. Just go around and click on them, they do hardly any damage, and they drop a lot of food as well. Um, if your defense level is 1, as well as your range, and it shouldn't take long at all to get to 30. So for the level range of 30 to 50, whatever you happen to be training on, this is the gear that we will be using. This is called Carapace Armor, and you do need 30 defense as well to wear it. So if you're training up your defense along with your range, you should have that requirement. And you will also need a Maple Shortbow and Mithril Arrows. All of this stuff is really cheap, so money should not be an issue at all, at least not until much later on in your range training. So from 30 to 50 range, one thing you can do is you can continue killing the troll shamans. There's still pretty good experience for that level range, but it's a lot more fun to move on to bigger and better things. So the first alternative here is Banshees. You do need 15 Slayer to kill them, which does not take very long to get at all, so that should not be too much of an obstacle, especially if you're training Slayer with magic, as a lot of level levels do. And you, we kill them in the Slayer Tower, so you'll need to pick up some earmuffs from any Slayer Master really cheap, not too much to worry about there, and also pick up a Slayer contract at the start of the tower for a little bit of extra Slayer XP and a bit of extra gold as well. So the Banshees are really good XP, um, just about the best thing that you can train on in this level range, so I would really recommend them, but if you really don't want to do the Slayer, another alternative is Green Dragons. You can use this to make a bit of money as well if you're using Sign of the Porters to bank the hides, so there's a small money-making opportunity if you are struggling with cash. But where you can kill the green dragons is in the wilderness. There's three different locations in the Forrent 3 dungeon to the north of the Varrock Lumber Mill and also to the northwest of Edgeville in about 15 wilderness, which is the easiest location to access if you're looking to bank stuff such as the dragon bones or dragon hides. But of course, it's much better XP just to stay here and kill them. They are very good range XP at this level range, and they're so weak to arrows that a maple bow is fine to kill them. You can pray magic, and that will negate most of the damage from their dragon fire, and then a few foods such as lobsters or monkfish will be plenty to suffice. But overall, green dragons are pretty good XP for this level range. Now for the medium levels. For 50 to 70 range, this is the gear that you will want to use. And the reason why I have this funky looking armor on is this is called Spined Armor. And Spined Armor is better than Dragonhide Armor because it provides a ranged bonus. So you'll get some bonus damage from your attacks while wearing the Spined Armor. It's great. It is fairly expensive compared to Dragonhide Armor, but you will kill monsters slightly faster. I also have an Orange Salamander and some Marintil Tar, which is the best level 50 range weapon you can use. So from 50 to 70 range, once again, I have a couple different alternatives for you to train your range on. The first one is Lesser Demons. These are a very common monster to train range on in these medium tier levels. And for a good reason, they're very good experience and they're quite easy to kill if you're using level 50 weapons because they have plenty of accuracy and damage to take out Lesser Demons. We are killing them in the Karamja Volcano Dungeon. So if you've done Dragon Slayer, this place should look very familiar and it's on the island of Karamja from the free-to-play area. Their drops aren't anything too special. They do drop a few Crimson Charms now and again, which can help, but the main reason why we're here is the range XP, and it should not take that long to get to 70 while training on these lesser demons. 
Another great method of range training within these levels is killing aberrant specters. So first of all, these do require level 60 Slayer in order to kill them. So not everyone that has 50 range is going to have 60 Slayer, but there also will be quite a few people that do. So the great thing about aberrant specters is they have some decent drops. One of the first monsters in this guide so far that you can make over a mil per hour just killing them. They drop a ton of noted herbs. And also you want to bring along some alchemy runes if you have the level to cast high level alchemy because they drop a lot of rune items as well. But a lot of really good noted drops from the aberrant specters. Some very, very good range XP on top of that. One other thing is you do need to remember to bring a nose peg or a slayer helm if you already have one at this point to kill the aberrant specters. If not, just like the Banshees, they'll drain your stats and they really hurt without a nose peg, so it's not a good idea to go in here without one. But they give a lot of experience per kill, and along with the drops, they're just a very good way of training range up until about level 70. Now that we're at the higher levels, at level 70 range, it's time for yet another gear upgrade, and everything in the gear setup got significantly upgraded here. I have Armadil Armor equipped. Now it is fairly cheap these days. However, if Armadil is a problem with how much it costs, then a good alternative to that is Royal Dragonhide Armor as well. And these do require 70 defense for the Armadil or 65 for the Royal Dragonhide. And then for the weapon, we're going to be using a Black Salamander with Harlander Tar for ammo. This weapon is really good in this level range, and it's pretty cheap as well compared to alternatives like the Crystal Bow, which cost more per shot, and you won't use ammo, of course, with the Black Salamander when using abilities. And finally, the last thing to mention is you really want to have a Charming Imp at this point. If you don't have a Charming Imp, it's a good idea to go do some Dungeoneering to get a Charming Imp, because the main monster to train on does drop a lot of charms, and it's going to save you a ton of time by having one, so you don't have to waste your time running around picking them up. So the monster that will probably become your primary range train all the way up to 90 or even to 99 because water fiends are great XP is just that, it's water fiends. So first of all, you need to complete barbarian training in order to access the best place to kill water fiends, which is down in the whirlpool in the ancient cavern dungeon. You can also kill them in the chaos tunnels, but it doesn't take too long to complete the barbarian training, so I would recommend to do that. And there are a couple spots to kill water fiends that can support about three or four people per world so it's not too difficult to find a spot here and water fiends are exceptional range training these are the way that i would say the majority of people that don't do slayer for range train to 99 range and it's definitely something to think about if you're going for 99 range because not only are these up to about 400k range xp per hour that does not come until much later with tier 90 weapons and the steel titan but they do get up to that you also get a ton of crimson charms from killing the water fiends as well which can you can use for your summoning training getting up to your yak and your steel titan so you're knocking out two birds with one stone here range as well as summoning and this is a great great training spot to stick with so if you do not want to train on Water Fiends for whatever reason, or if you want to make more money throughout your train because Water Fiends are not very good for money, which is fine because they're good for just about everything else, an alternative is Aquanite. So these do require 78 Slayer, which is a fairly high Slayer level. That's the main obstacle with killing Aquanites, but once you have that, the Aquanites are amazing because they go down in just a couple hits. They only have about 3.5k HP per monster, so it takes hardly any time at all to kill them. They drop a good amount of range XP every single kill, and also their drops are very lucrative. They drop a ton of tree seeds, a lot of noted herbs. They drop Serenic Scales, which I managed to get one here on the video just within a couple kills. And they also drop some battle staves, which you can either alk or bank. So it all adds up to about 2.5 million profit per hour if you decide to pick everything up. Picking stuff up does reduce your experience a little bit, so that's one thing to keep in mind. But the Aquanites are definitely the way to go if you're looking to make some profit in this range of levels while you're training your range as well. And now the gear setup for 90 to 99 range. Not a whole lot has changed between this gear setup and the level 71 except for the Royal Crossbow, which is a level 80 weapon. Not a level 90 weapon, but the level 90s are expensive, and I'm not going to expect anyone who's not max combat to own those. So the Royal Crossbow is definitely all you need to train up to 99 range, along with Royal Bolts. And we also have a Bone Crusher and a Demon Horn, which are Dungeoneering items that will restore your prayer as you bury bones with the Bone Crusher. Really handy. If you don't have 90 prayer for the Demon Horn Necklace, you can use the Dragon Tooth Necklace instead, which has 60 prayer and does the same thing. It just restores less prayer for Dragon Bones than the Demon Horn does. 
So if you do not want to train Slayer and you don't want to have 90 Slayer before, you can get a new monster to train on for these levels. I will have a couple more suggestions after the Dark Beast, but your best bet will be to stick with Water Fiends until level 99. And providing that you still need charms for summoning, that's not a bad idea to do in the first place. But if you do have 90 Slayer, or if you're planning on getting that soon, there is another alternative to train to 99 range in Dark Beasts. Dark Beasts are excellent range XP, and they also provide much, much better drops than the Water Fiends do, so you'll make a lot more money here. It's very easy to make 2 to 2.5 mil per hour killing Dark Beasts, even if you are somewhat AFKing with the Ricochet ability. Another way to AFK them is with Cannoning. If you want to know more about that, it's very expensive, but it's amazing range XP, an amazing way to AFK. I'll have a link down in the description to a guide that will go more in depth on how to kill Dark Beast if you're interested in that. But this is one of the best ways to train range in the entire game, obviously. Really, really good XP, really good money, not so great on the charm, so if you are looking to train your summoning, Water Fiends might be your best bet, but Dark Beasts are a solid training option regardless. One way a lot of people like to train range is through PVM, through killing the God Wars dungeon boss Kriara, or as a lot of people like to refer to it as Armadil. So I'm not going to be going over how to kill Armadil in this guide because that's a lot to cover and it goes very in-depth. But if you want to know how to kill Armadil, I'll have a link to the guide. You can either click on the Armadil dude and it will take you there, or you can alternatively go in the description the boring way or the way for people on mobile devices to watch the Armadil guide as well. So Armadil is great, great range XP. If you have max gear and are somehow not 99 range yet, then you can kill him and almost AFK him as well. But it's very, very easy to kill, providing that you have a good gear setup and all. And you can make some decent money through the drops as well. So that's one thing to consider. Check that guide out if you're interested. Alright, it's time for our final method here, and this method is the Abyss, the AFK way to train range. And due to a fairly recent update to Red Chins, this is now an amazing way to train range. And you'll see why in just a second, but here's the gear setup, just copy that. You want Red Chins and an offhand crossbow, your best offhand crossbow that you have access to. And for your inventory, you won't need a whole lot of food if you have the Sacrifice ability unlocked that will save you so much food. If not, you want to bring like a unicorn, bunyip, a bunch of rock tails, whatever it takes in order for you to survive all the attacks from the abyssal creatures. A lot of you may be very familiar with the abyss from your magic train to 99. It's an extremely popular way to train magic, but you can also get some really good range XP there as well using these red chinchampas. So it works the same way as the magic does, but the red chinchampas now work with abilities in auto attacking. Um, enemies and hitting multiple targets at once so that's the reason why they're now really good as you can see I'm using revolution and it's still hitting a large amount of enemies also the reason why sacrifice is so good is sacrifice also hits a large amount of enemies and heals you from all of those hits so you want to have sacrifice first on your action bar and if you're close to 99 defense and you have good armor like the armadil armor that sacrifice ability will provide you almost all or most of the healing that you need and then you can just bring a few prayer potions to turn soul split on every once in a while or bring something like a unicorn or a few food to heal up when your health gets a bit low but overall extremely afk doing this you just have auto retaliate on all the abyssal creatures try to come at you and you just knock them down so you can afk for 10 minutes until the abyssal creatures come unaggressive and then you have to run all the way to the north and run back but this is the way to go for range training if you want to AFK and don't mind spending a little bit of money doing it. That will be all for this video, so make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed or if it helped you out or for whatever other reason you may have. If you have any need for any other skill guides, there's a link to a playlist that includes all of them on screen and in the description. Anyway, that's about all for me. The next guide I plan on updating is a Slayer guide that will probably come in a few weeks' time. But until then, I'll see you guys next time. Farewell.